Iowa DNR biologist is going to join us as well. So, all right, you ready to light this candle? Hey, everybody, good to see you on Facebook Live. And let's just go ahead and start the show. Charlie Allen Station. Clear the air lanes. Clear all air lanes for the big broadcast. All right, welcome to this week's edition of the Wednesday Drive, brought to you in part by our good friends out at Slick Trick Broadheads this week. Hope everyone's having a great Wednesday all across the good U.S. of A. Good morning, Steve, or good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon, Jeff. Good to see everybody on Facebook Live. We've got a fun show for you tonight. We're going to be listening uh, to our friend Jim Coffey from the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, and uh, we're going to talk turkeys a little bit, uh, so I'm excited about that. Let me go ahead and see if I can get Jim on the line real quick here. Because he's staying late for us. That's a dedicated biologist for you. That's that's for sure. We always appreciate what Jim does. Hey, Jim. Jim, how you doing? You're live on the air, pal. All right, thank you. Are you? Are you? You, you, you making it? Yeah, just had to shut my office door. Yeah, well, yeah, shut that door. We don't want to tell all our secrets. I don't want anybody to jump in on us here. <laughs> no, that's all right. What have you been up to? Ah, uh, lots of things, lots of things. It's winter, so it's, uh, we're getting some turkey trapping done, we're having some public meetings and about deer, and wrapping up our harvest report, so we're always busy. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, we uh, we had some pretty good moisture on the ground. Uh, hey, hey, Fishing Dave, Tony, how you doing? Richard Young, good to see you, good afternoon. Jeff, good to see you, uh, thank you so much, appreciate that. We uh, had some decent moisture on the ground. We had a pretty good melt-off here the last couple of days, and we might get some more tonight, they say, huh? Sounds like it's coming. The weather is definitely changing in southern Iowa. Yeah, that's for How's it going? I just stepped outside and seen a bunch of snow geese going north. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. I'm downstairs. I got Raven raising heck upstairs for some reason, but... So if you hear a dark dog barking, that's on my end. Hey, did you, uh, um, I went out and uh, I got my mineral in the bedding areas. I got all that done uh, for my deer and stuff. I, I did see some turkeys flocked up a little bit. Um, what, are you, what are you guys hearing on turkeys right now? Yeah, so we uh, just finished up our, our summer brood surveys, just got that out. And we had a pretty good production this year. Um, been hearing good reports from people in the field out when they're deer hunting this year. And of course, we've got our bow hunter survey that'll be analyzed a little later in the spring. Um, but, but we're seeing good numbers. Now, is that statewide or in certain areas doing better than others? Yeah, yeah. So no. So we do a statewide um, analysis, and then we also break it down by the nine agricultural regions in the state, which are, you know, roughly 15 counties each or so. And eight of the nine showed above five-year average um, numbers. Um, the only one that was below that was our what we call West Central, which would be kind of over in the uh, uh, Council Bluffs to, to Omaha area, roughly. Um, and that was down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, everything else looked really good. Well, that's that's exciting news, I'm telling you. I, I, I've been talking to a lot of folks that's already got turkey fever. I flipped a switch. You know me. As soon as deer season's over, I flip it, and I'm already thinking about Longbeard, so... I do. Yep. I usually flip a little earlier than most people, but uh, people are really starting to get excited about turkey hunting a little bit right now. It's coming pretty quick. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Can you? I mean, the Iowa Deer Classics uh, in like two and a half, three weeks. I mean, it's it's crazy how fast it's going already. It does. February is a short month, and it's hard to get everything done. And then we'll be right into spring, and then everybody will be talking turkeys again. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait. Hey, Donovan, what's up there, buddy in Kansas? Good to see you. So Jim, I uh, uh, real quick, uh, the brood survey was good. I'm glad to hear that. You guys are you guys are doing? Uh, are you collecting turkeys right now for studies? Well, we're trapping turkeys and we're putting GPS transmitters on them. Okay. Yeah. We're, and, and this weather is not good for that. Because <laughs> it's hard to get them to, to do what you want to. So we're going to hopefully take advantage of this snowstorm we're going to get here tonight. Yeah. And our goal is to get between 80 and 100 birds on the air, and we're at about 35 right now, I think. 
Now, what do you do if you're out there turkey hunting and you call one in and it's got a transmitter? Yeah, well, you probably won't be able to see the transmitter when you shoot it, so you're going to harvest it just like any other bird. But yeah. we're only putting them on hens, so okay. your, hen better, your hen better have a beard on it if you shoot it. Yeah, all right. Well, that, see, I did, that's good information. I didn't know, so... Yeah, yeah. So we, we do mark we do mark jakes if we catch them. Yeah. Um, with a with a leg band, and obviously we like to have that leg band information turned back in so we can look at the you know distance that it traveled from where we caught it to where you shot it at um, for dispersal information, and then anything else that we can collect from that animal once the hunter has it in its hand. I got gotcha. you. All right, that sounds like an, that sounds like fun. So, um, and how many birds are you going to do that to? Well, we would like to get between 80 and 100 on the air this year. We'd like to have 100 birds going into the spring nesting season. Yeah. Radio transmitter. We have about 20 left over from last year, so our goal was to get another 80 out this year. Um, and then if we did happen to recapture some of those birds from last year, we would probably retrofit them with a new transmitter just to make sure the batteries are fresh and, and we're still collecting good information. I got gotcha. you. Hey, Mountain Man, what's going on in Pennsylvania, buddy? Good to see you. I, I got to tell you, I... Uh, I remember when I first moved up here, I saw a ton of bearded hens. Now, I know every 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 little farm is different, Jim, and I, I get that. But boy, I I just haven't seen the bearded hen lately, lately in the areas that I've been. Yeah, and, and they're not very common, but but people do see them, and of course they are illegal bird to harvest in Iowa. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I I got one when I first moved up here, and I made a decoy out of her. And yep. that was Ruby on the TV show. And I tell you what, man, she 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 was awesome. You know why I called her Ruby, right? No, I don't. Because she, sure yeah, because she worked like a gym. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put up pump. But uh, man, I I got to tell you, um, uh, you know, hunting in Missouri for years, I never saw a beard of him. It was crazy. Yeah. Turkeys are turkeys are unique. If you look, if you look um, across the entire population in most states. When we recorded in Iowa, it used to be around three to five percent of your hens would have beards. Uh -huh. um, nationally, they kind of reported at five to seven percent. But there is some indication that if you have a bearded hen in the area and she's um, productive, that you'll have more bearded hens in that area. Yeah. So it's not something that's just generically random across the landscape. It, it's you know I remember dairies in Missouri too. You'd shoot a gobbler with um, well, we had areas we shot turk trees with no spurs um for years in one in off one farm or one series of farms and they all had no spurs and that was you know probably a genetic mutation of turkeys in that area so those things can carry over the population so so far you're hearing you're seeing and hearing about good numbers across iowa yeah and, and of course that's relative yeah you know so obviously southeast iowa has been one of our concerns for years but they've had three good production years um, but when numbers are low, it takes a while to build those numbers back up to where, where people are, are satisfied like they used to be. But we can report that we've had three above average years in, in southeast Iowa. And central Iowa looks tremendous this year uh, with some of the highest poult per hen ratios we've had in several years. Yeah. So, Hi, Dave. Yeah. Hey, David. Good afternoon, buddy. Thanks for watching on Facebook Live. We appreciate that very much. So uh, I'm going to start my season out at Triple H Outfitters in Lincoln, Kansas, where I normally do. Um, now, in the in the uh, air unit that I hunt with uh, Donovan and the gang, you can still harvest two birds, but Donovan's went ahead and did, made the decision to cut it to one bird per hunter this season to help uh, yep. to help with uh, the population and try to give back to the resource a little bit. So uh, we all said that's awesome. Don't worry about it. Um, any concerns about Iowa with two, uh, harvesting your two birds? No, that's not something that we're really considering. We get a few people each year that think we should only harvest one, and, and we get some people that think we should be trying to harvest three. And we've been very content with, with two is a good number. It gets yeah. people out of the woods. There's plenty of resource for them to do that. Um, yeah. And again, people can really self regulate. Yeah, Jim, you'll never hear the words three birds out of my mouth ever. Yeah, I'm. It, huh? It, it's something that people get a little a little upset about when it, it does come up every once in a while. and it's something that we just don't uh, feel it's really needed on the landscape. Hey, you know, we talked a little bit about this last time I had you on, but why, why you know, uh, Kansas, man, their, uh, their pheasant and quail populations are doing great. They, I mean, the quail just exploded. It, and and it, isn't that weird at how some of the, the ground, other ground nesting birds can, are, are doing really well, but then like some of the areas for turkeys is down? 
It is, and those are some of the mysteries of wildlife. Is, is what is affecting? Is it that success? Is it pole survival? You know, and we tend to think of those big, broad picture items, but there could be other factors that we don't know that are out there. Yeah. One of the things you know, we've talked about several times is you know the LPDV virus. Uh, we know that impacts turkeys. We don't know how that impacts quail or pheasants, or if they're impacted by it. It doesn't seem to impact them. So that could be an indication of something changing on the landscape. But it could be weather conditions. It could be all kinds of things. Um, well, I, I can tell you one reason they're they're doing really good is I, they don't have to worry about me shooting them with a gun. I still I, I'm still one for forty. <laughs> Hey, Roger, up in New York. Good to see you, buddy. Always fun to have you on here. And Hoyt, good to see you. Thank you, Hoyt. I appreciate you tuning in. All right, hey, I'm gonna, I want to. I got about five, six minutes. Do I, bud? Yeah, I was going to say real quick, though, Dan, is that, you know, you kind of brought up a point there that's fun to laugh about, but we, we do try to remind hunters that the average success rate of an Iowa hunter is 20, 20 to 25%. For turkeys? By success, for turkeys. And yeah. when we say success, we're measuring a harvested bird. Now, you and I have a lot of success in never harvesting bird, calling them in, you know, getting them close, having all that fun. But if we actually say putting a tag on a bird, only about 20, 22% of Iowans do that every year. Well, and it's even less for that because, I mean, I bow hunt everything. So, you know. You're, you're down into the 7%. Yeah, I mean, it's really, you know, that's why I always say anything I take with my bow, Jim's a trophy to me because you have to get them so close to get a, you know, to get a good shot on them. Hey, Brant, good to see you, buddy. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Um, that's, that's one of the beauties of turkey hunting in general is it's, it is an intimate sport. It's up close. It's personal. Um, and, and they're designed to, to see predators and escape from them, and that's what we're trying to do, and, and they get away from us more than we get them. Yeah. Uh, Larry Mack, uh, my buddy on the TV show, is heading to Texas to go hunt. He's doing a real late uh, late see, uh, deal with a, a deer on some uh, – him and Paul are going to go try to get some – late late season deer down in texas so uh when he gets back we're going to start doing a, a turkey calling uh program uh or just uh like a uh, like i don't want a webinar or whatever you want to we're going to just kind of go over the different vocalizations and when to call when yep. not to call and stuff like that so i'm looking forward to doing that but since you really you're a biologist i'm going to kind of go over let's just talk a little bit about yelps um you know i tell everybody on from talking with you and some of your uh, counterparts across the country you know, I've been told turkeys make around 26 to 28 different vocalizations, depending, you know, where you're at um, or on the bird. Um, let's just talk yelps. What can Tell me what a plain yelp is to that bird. What does that mean, plain yelp? Yeah, yeah just a plain yelp is essentially just, uh, hey, I'm here. Is uh, It's a way for turkeys to generally communicate with themselves to, um, you know, they're, they're walking through tall grass and shrubs and things, too. It's kind of a way for them to hear other turkeys, know other turkeys around. They're a very social bird. Yeah. And they're spending a lot of their time with their heads down, picking bugs and picking acorns and picking greens. And so when they're yelping, that's usually like, hey, I'm over here, but I don't see you. Um, we need to get together and get a little closer. So it's kind of a socialization call. It's kind of a, uh, for hands, I say it's always kind of like ladies sitting around talking to each other while they're quilting or, or doing some social activity. It just lets them know all, there's other hens around. Them. Yeah, I didn't say that. That was Jim Coffee, ladies. That wasn't yeah, that. Yeah, yeah that, that that was. Yeah, that wasn't me. Uh, is that like one or two notes then? Typically, yeah, yelps. Um, I always like when I yelp. Personally, I usually go in threes, um, three fives, three five sevens. Okay. So again, it kind of depends on how that hen where she's at with other hens. If they can see each other and they're far apart, they'll still yelp, but it's usually not near as dramatic. Um, but if they can't see other hens with that lone hen, then they'll start to be a little more aggressive or a little longer in their in their structure. All right. What about excited yelps? Yeah, so excited yelps, that's another whole different deal. That means, hey, I really can't see you and I'm nervous. I want to find it. And sometimes people also associate that with an assembly yelp, which I want to get together in a group. Because we know with turkeys, there's protection in numbers. Right. When there's more turkeys, there's more eyes, greater chance that we're going to be able to survive as a group. So that lone hen can be very excited about, I want to get together with somebody else very quickly. Okay. Uh, sem assembly. Sem what's the difference between assembly yelps and excited yelps? Yeah, not, in my mind, not a lot. There are, but assembly yelps are really sometimes like if that flock gets broken up or it's first thing in the morning, they fly down different directions. It's like, I want to get together right now. Yeah. Is, we need to get together as a group right now. And that assembly, you know, a lot of times that's the maybe even the mama. 
trying to get the young of the year back together. Her group is to herd the cats together. So I want to assemble everybody back together so we can start our day off. Um, okay, before I talk about contentment calls, um, do, do turkeys reestablish their pecking order every morning? Oh, that's a good question. I would say that there's always, you know, that dominant boss hen mm -hmm. that everybody just knows she's in charge. And a lot of times you're talking about young of the year being with her. They're very naive. So they're relying on her to show them the way, to what's right, to learn from them, to mentor for them. We even see that in deer. You know, that mama deer is the one that everybody follows because she survived, so let's follow her. Yeah, that's... So I would say they reestablish it every day, but at some point, especially with the jakes or the gobblers, somebody's going to step up and say, you're not as tough as you think you are. <laughs> and it yeah, because uh, I, I was having a conversation about that, and somebody asked me that, and I said, well, as far as I know, like with the toms, um, you know, because if you kill the dominant tom, I mean, the, the uh, subordinates are all over him. I mean, they're, they're trashing him. So, I, you know, I, 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 I thought I'd ask you, because I, I told him I honestly didn't know the, I wasn't 100% sure of that answer. And, and I'm not sure they do. They just know that their testosterone is running levels up. And when that gobbler on the ground after he's been shot, they say, this is my chance to spur him and kick him and let him know. They don't know he's dead. They just know that he's in a vulnerable position. Yeah. And that's my chance to try to beat him. So now he'll think that I'm tougher than I was yesterday. Man, it's, ama and, it, it, it's amazing when they jump on him and start picking at his head and lifting his head up with their mouth and stuff. Boy, they, they're brutal, man. Well, they want to fight. Because yeah. they, they, they know that there's something to be established there, and this is their chance to do that. Yeah, them little velociraptors. <laughs> yeah. I know, you know, that's the one creature. I, I they're, they're so ugly, they're beautiful. And uh, I hate to say it that way, but, I mean, they're, they're, they just, they're vicious, man. Turkeys are velociraptors. They are velociraptors. No, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't you think if 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 they if you yeah, I'm telling you, man, and big old spurs on them. Um, hey, real quick, um, contentment calls. Now, you you and I were talking off air, and you said, in your opinion, there was just one contentment call, and that's a purr. Yeah, and and that's and that's you know in a specific situation, a yelp can be considered a contentment call. Um, but it, in my mind, that's more of just a, hey, I'm in the area type thing or, or a, uh, a purr is really, I, I put that in the, in the frame of, I don't have to see you. Mm -hmm. We're already in the group and I'm feeding. So I'm just purring so that you know where I'm at. And I know where you're at. So the whole block of work is kind of moving as one organism. And so when there, when there's nothing to be afraid of, everything's cool. They're just purring each other. Robin, and, and, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim. I didn't mean to step on you. But that's fine. Now, go ahead and finish your thought. So I was just going to say is, is that's a way for them just to, to stay together, to understand they're all around each other without being loud and attracting other animals to them, is they're just going to purr. Yeah. And when you're purring as a hunter, a lot of times, especially if you're hunting late in the season when the vegetation is really, really brilliant, um, that yelp can actually scare a gobbler away. Yeah. So, but if you're purring and he's still trying to see you or he doesn't know where you're at, he knows you're really close. And so he's going to start looking. He's going to start putting his head up. He's going to start trying to find you much more intently. Now, Robin, uh, Robin's watching us on Facebook Live right now. Uh, he said Nebraska cut their tags this year. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. I heard they cut them pretty severely, actually. Yeah. yeah. Is their population worse off than we are? Yeah, especially western Nebraska. Western Nebraska is really taking a hit, which kind of falls in line with western Kansas. Um and, and I know Nebraska's got some research going on right now, too. So they were going to cut back, I think, pretty heavily on their non-resident tags. I, I got you. All right. Well, listen, uh, I, man, is there anything else you want to tell the folks before I get, get you out of there so you can go home and eat? Ah, listen, I have got a few more things to do. So, uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's that time of year. And, and don't forget, you know, turkey season will be here right around the corner real soon. Um, but we're getting lots of phone calls about shed antler hunting, and the ice was still good up to yesterday, but it's, we're losing it fast. So there's still plenty of outdoor opportunities in Iowa. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, gobble calls. Uh, when you got a tom out there that is so hinned up, yeah. and, and you're hunting, uh, say, and you're hunting in a, you, I always tell everybody you want to make sure you're doing this in a safe situation with a gobble call. But uh, uh, challenge, challenge that tom that's hinned up. I mean, what do you think? I've had it. I've had it work for me, and I've had them where it didn't matter. 
you don't do both, and it kind of goes back to your earlier question about dominance. Yeah. If you're dealing with a subdominant bird and you gobble and he's had his rear end kicked every day for the last five days, he's like, no, I ain't going over there. I don't want to deal with that again. Okay. But if it happens to be a bird that says, you know, today's my day, he can come running right to you. We've all had that same experience with decoys. Some well, birds run to decoys, some birds run away from decoys. Well, you know what I told you I was going to do? I've got a buddy of mine, uh, the live action decoys. Have you met them yet at the Deer Classic? No, I have not. They, they're the ones that have got those uh, those strutter decoys where the tail fan will pop up and go side to side. And they've always, they always got a booth. But anyway, they're making me a ground stake this year with a string. So I can take that tail fan and pop it up and go side to side with just a stake. I'm going to put that yep. in the middle of my spread. If I got a if I got a dominant bird out there with several hens and I start popping that tail fan up, that's to me I think I got a good chance of getting him ticked off, don't you? Yeah, and, and what that really becomes is, is we've done that for years with with Canada geese using flags. Is it's an attractive? It says you need to be over here. Yeah, and it, it gets that bird to come, and of course then you're, you're trying to really catch him visually that he says, oh, there's a group of turkeys over there, and there's action going on. So I need to walk over there. So it's just really as a, as a visual to attract them um, to the group more than anything. Okay, Nick, yeah. we Nick Webb says he's enjoying listening to Jim. Thank you, Nick. We appreciate that. Jim, any, any seminars or uh, workshops the DNR is doing before season starts? Yeah, absolutely. So we will be doing a turkey hunting seminar um, at the Butch Olson shooting range, uh, I believe March 9th and March 16th to our um, – our hunter education courses. People can sign up for that. I haven't heard how full it is. We usually have around 30, 35 people. We'll do it over two nights and we'll cover laws and regulations. And then we go into a lot of just turkey hunting techniques and calling and, and questions and answers. It's a great time every year. Okay. You know, a, you know, a devil dog by the name of Todd Hyatt. Todd Hyatt. I might know the face. I don't know, recognize the name. Uh, he's one of my Marine buddies. He said to tell you hi. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Jim. Hey, thanks for everything you do, but I'll try and get you back on the Saturday morning show before season starts, okay? That sounds great. All right. Be safe out there, pal. Take care. There he goes, my friend Jim Coffee from the Iowa Department of, <laughs> Department of Natural Resources. I need to take a real quick break, and I'll be right back on the Outdoor Call Radio Network. Whether it's camping, hunting, or fishing, you want your camping setup to be easy and your stay as comfortable as possible. Camp Right has been helping folks enjoy the outdoors as problem-free as possible since 1999. Camp Right employees are outdoor enthusiasts that use... That was a good time. segment. Todd's really good. I always enjoy having him on. Always learn a lot when I have Todd on. Tents like the original tent cot that started it all. You ever get a chance to talk to him? He's down in the Sheridan area. He's, he's really a good biologist. With the added protection of a tent, Camprite features several models of tent cot units, including single and double units. They also specialize in sleeping bags, camping tables, cooking prep units, chairs, and other fine quality outdoor products. With over 17 years of field testing, great outdoor gear products, Camprite is the right choice to make adventures not only comfortable, but also carefree. Check out all these Camprite products at your local sportsman's warehouse or anytime on the web at Camprite.com. That's Camprite with a K. Hey, America, when you barbecue, cookies is the one. Lots of flavor, lots of goodness, thick and rich, lots of fun. Hey, America, when you barbecue, try cookies, barbecue sauce for a treat. Cookies, barbecue sauce, it's the barbecue sauce. America loves to eat. You're heading out on your morning hunt well before sunrise. So One more, guys. Stay undetected from that giant you've been chasing all season. Wouldn't it be nice to know exactly where your stand or blind location is without letting anyone know where you're at walking in? Have you ever heard of Onyx? Onyx is one of the most important pieces of hunting gear that you can use and always have with you. The Onyx Hunt app allows you not only to get from your truck to What's your What's everybody hunt, having for dinner tonight? It also allows you to mark and save your parking spots, scrapes, I'm thinking some food fried food turkey lines, strip sounds awful some good. possible next stand locations. The Onyx Hunt app is also a great way to see your property and know where you stand. Onyx is a mobile app that you can take anywhere. It's recognized by game wardens all around the country as a valuable hunting tool. So, if you want to always know where you are and have the ability to save information that will help you hey, be a Parker, better hunter, how are you? go download the Onyx Hunt app at your app store today. 
Do you love hearing that old Tom sound off while you're in the field? Well, then you need to check out Alive Action Decoys. Hey, guys, it's Outdoors Dan here. Alive Action Decoys are one of the most realistic up, decoy Todd? systems you can deploy while you're in the field turkey hunting. Wade and Teresa Goddard start with a Dave Smith Gobbler Decoy and then apply their patented system that allows you to raise your decoy's tail fan up and down Move it side to side and even walk that tom up and back while it's on the platform. A live action decoys are so amazingly lifelike that they're going to fool even the wariest old boss tom you got running around your woods. Plus, the good thing is they're made right here in the good old U.S. of A. For more information about a live action decoys, please check them out on Facebook or call them at 815-674-1626. Take it from me, Outdoors Dan. They're going to help you be more successful in the field this year. In these times when a lot of us are working from home, it's even more important to make sure your home is the right temperature and comfortable. Now is a great time to call the experts at Wyckoff Heating and Cooling at 287-6000 to schedule a check on your current heating and cooling systems. Is your house too dry and giving your family issues? A Honeywell dehumidifier system installed with your AC heating system can solve that issue right away. Wyckoff Heating and Cooling is a family-owned and operated business that has been serving Iowa residents and businesses for over 70 years. They offer 24-hour service and programs like the Peace of Mind Plan for less than $15 a month. So if you want more time on the water or in the woods this year, please call the folks at Wyckoff Heating and Cooling for any of your home or business heating and cooling needs. One call to Wyckoff Heating and Cooling will bring you peace of mind under your roof every day. All right, welcome back to the Wednesday Drive on the Outdoor Call Radio Network. Hope, uh, hope everyone's having a great Wednesday, and thank you so much for joining in. We always appreciate you tuning in. Hey, real quick, uh, walleye season is going to be closing down February 15th. Sean, what's up over there in Illinois, buddy? Lots outdoors. Good to see you. I just saw him, man. He came over and he came over and gave me an education on some new e-bikes coming out over there, at, over there in Illinois. Uh, walleye season closes February 15th on the Iowa Great Lakes. Walleye fishing uh, is open through February 14th. It will close after that date. Reopens on May 6th. These are the only Iowa lakes that have a closed season for walleye. So make sure you uh, you take care of that. Had a great conversation with the folks over at Waypoint today. Tony, what's going on? What's up? The Unknown Files tonight. Tonight on the Unknown Files, we're going to be talking about a really prolific uh, ghost writer. His name is Troy Taylor. He's written hundreds and hundreds of books on ghosts. Uh, we're going to be talking about some of the ghosts, uh, more famous ghosts in Illinois. And uh, one of them is uh, Resurrection Mary up in uh, up in Chicago. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to, to having Troy on. He's, he's a wealth of knowledge, and uh, that'll be a fun show tonight at 7 o'clock on the Unknown Files show. Thank you, Tony, for bringing that up. I appreciate that. Uh, Beast Feast is going to be February 18th out at Stony Creek Inn. Thanks to everybody that uh, has been asking about that. They do have a couple tables. As soon as we find out if tables are not going to sell out, they're going to open them up to individual tickets. And we got some really good uh, auction items and other stuff this year that's going to be a lot of fun. So that'll be at Stony Creek Inn in Johnston, Iowa on February 18th. And proceeds for that event will go to the Family Cancer Network. I want to thank the Iowa Jeep Club for helping us with the outdoor package this year along with Sportsman's Warehouse. We got a really nice uh, live auction uh, camping deal, including some camp ride stuff. I'm excited about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, I talked to John today uh, from the Iowa uh, Show Productions. He's the gentleman that owns the Iowa Deer Classic. They're going to have some really, really, really cool uh, deer uh, at the show this year. They're going to have some record holders as well. So if you like to see some uh, amazing deer, you're going to want to make sure you don't miss the Iowa Deer Classic. Larry Mack and I will be there at the Outdoor Call radio booth. Now, we're going to be letting people, uh, we're going to be telling them about the app, and then we're going, to be, we're going to try to get people registering for the deer hunt like we've been doing every week. But I've got a separate, uh, we've got a separate turkey hunting package I put together. I've got one more thing to put in there, and I'll tell you what it is. But for sure, I'm giving away a Tacticam camera and a, uh, some Rupert's Roost in Peace turkey calls. So that's for sure. And uh, I've got a uh, Sportsman's, Warehouse, well, Sportsman's Warehouse gift card 
uh, to throw in there too. But I got one more thing. I just got to get the okay for it before I say out on the air. But uh, I'm going to try and give away a couple of those before spring turkey season. Like I, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. So, so you got a chance of not only winning a dream hunt of a lifetime for Whitetail in Kansas at Triple H with us at Respect the Game TV, but you got a chance of getting some really good turkey stuff too uh, here in a few weeks. So make sure you keep keep tuned to the Outdoor Call Radio app. If you haven't downloaded that yet, please do. It's free on your device's app store. We've got some new shows coming on. Uh, like I said, I was talking to Turner at Waypoint TV, and uh, he's going to be sending me some new programs to add to the great lineup we already have. So it's a great time to download it. It's always free. You can listen 24-7 and take it wherever you go. As long as you have cell service or Wi-Fi service, you can listen to the outdoors uh, wherever you go. And I appreciate each and every one of you uh, that have downloaded that and uh, support the app. I'm a veteran. We're veteran-owned. And uh, I'm going to try to keep that. At, uh, well, I'm not going to try. We're going to do it. As long as I'm broadcasting, it will always be free to listen to the program and to the network. I will never ask you guys to do like a Patreon thing or to do a sponsorship or a subscription at a charge. I promise you, I will always have it free. Okay? And uh, that's just me. That's just my way of saying thank you for letting me do this for a living for 25 years. Thank you, Jake. Jake from State Farm. Jake's being nice to me because he wants my Kansas City Chiefs shirt. That's that's what he's wanting. <laughs> oh, let's see. I think I got everything uh, I told you about that. I got other outdoor news, but I'm going to save that for for Saturday's show. We're going to talk. I've got deer numbers in for the 22-23 season. I'll tell you about that when we get uh, on Saturday on 7 to 9 on 1350 ESPN. Uh, and, and tonight, like I said, we're going to we're gonna ghost it up. We're going to talk about ghosts with Troy Taylor tonight at 7 o'clock. So here in about an hour and a half, uh, we'll get that going. So anyway, all right, uh, anything, uh, anything, haha, you know it. Well, Jake, I know you, man. Hey, Gary Peck. Hey, Gary, you got to get a hold of Bigfoot Bob up in uh, Deer River, Minnesota for me, Gary, because I want to book him for a show. Bigfoot Bob, I'm not making that up, folks. This guy actually has seen Bigfoot. I don't, and I'm not talking about Gary Peck. I'm talking about the big fella, the other fella. So, uh, uh, Gary, get his info for me when you can. Gary's my bear guide and my walleye guide up in Minnesota. My buddy. So there you go. All right, I got to get out of here. Uh, I will be back on the air at seven. If you need anything, let me know. Hey, don't forget, I will be at Lot of Pop Popcorn. This Saturday from 7 to 9 in Ankeny, stop on by. I'll have, uh, I don't know, 20 pairs of Iowa Deer Classic tickets. Come out and see me, and I'll give you a pair of tickets for the Iowa Deer Classic. And uh, I might have something else to give away uh, there. I know I know Arlie's going to be giving away some free popcorn. So come out and see me. It's, uh, I think it was at State Street or 2nd Street. Just look up Lot of Pop Popcorn, and you'll find it. Brand, Brandmeyer uh, Popcorn Company. You can't miss it. Um, and uh, we're going to have fun with that. All right, I am going to get out of here. I will see you next week. Until then, God bless you, and uh, for all you guys that like to go down the rabbit hole, I will be back at 7 o'clock for the Unknown File Show. So until then, adios. Let me get out of here and uh, wrap this up. All right, that's it. We're out of here. Good night, everybody. Have a great, great, great night. And uh, I will see you either at 7 on Saturday. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you listening in.